It may seem that the story of you is chaotic. However, in reality, it is not. The more stories you pass through, the more likely you will be to piece it into one whole picture. Use every possible opportunity. The truth is somewhere close. Welcome to My Name Is You. I saw this game in the Steam store page and I thought it was really cool. It's sort of a graphic novel with a little bit of dark humor. I don't know if it's going to be good, but let's start. I suppose I will start at the very beginning. Chapter 1 Once upon a time, there lived you. Despite his unusual name, his life was hardly any different from others. It was an unusually usual day when he was getting ready to go to work. Two hours of sleep. What a formality, he said to himself, glancing at his watch. He was used to working at night, just as he was used to never having days off. He was used to working at night, just as he was used to never having days off. That morning, the buttons on his shirt were fastened faster than usual. Okay. This was not by chance. The tear-off calendar boldly declared Friday, April 3rd. Oh, April. That's that's my birth month. It reminded him that there were only three work days before his holiday. Three work days. And there was no room for mistakes. Okay, no mistakes. His room in a communal apartment was not very big, so it did not take him long to pack. Got it. Having got dressed, he quietly walked past the neighbor's rooms into the hallway. Okay, so when's the gameplay? Somebody was snoring loudly in the furthest room, which caused you to smile for some reason. I think it was me. He walked up to the front door and accidentally stepped on a pile of letters. Picking up the envelopes, mm -hmm. he saw his name on one of them. Oh. You automatically put it in his pocket and walked out. Okay. The thought that next Sunday, a huge stone would be removed from the entrance to the crypt of his existence by the power of labor legislation kept you going. Continue then. Okay, now her to work, read the letter. I don't know, I was trying to see a letter for me at somebody else's door, but I have to go to work. I'm gonna read the letter. Glancing at the address line. A chill went through Yu's body for a split second. From Darina. Darina. Yu was confused by the seal on the envelope, indicating the place of departure. No leaf grad. No leaf grad. No leave or don't leave. Okay, let's continue. Is she really coming back to cannot? You want cannot. To no leave, Gad. Cannot. Dear you, my doctor's suspicions are confirmed. I have the same disease that struck you. Oh. I thought it over and decided that we need to break up. Oh. It may seem that things like that should bring people closer, but it would be unfair to myself. Okay. We can have our last date on the morning of April 3rd in the Seafront Cafe. And then... I will leave Cannot and go abroad. 
Okay then, it's today. He felt dizzy. Mm, drank too much. Go to work, we'll go to the cafe. Hmm. That's a tough, uh, this, this is tough right now because she has a disease and it will be the last time I could, I could see her. But if I don't go to work, I will be losing uh, a part of my, uh, a really great part of my life that I will be receiving by going there. Oh, this is tough. It's like the monorail question. I'm gonna go to the cafe. Although you suffered from excessive hypochondria, he really had an incurable illness. Mm -hmm. He clearly remembered the day when he heard the diagnosis. Okay. Since that moment, he stopped counting new birthmarks on his body. He seemed shaken up after reading the letter, but not surprised. He tried to squeeze out a tear to see if he was still capable of showing emotions. Yeah, that's harsh. Too harsh. Alas, he just welled up a little. You decided that it was because he had drunk a large amount of coffee, which dehydrated his already dried up body. Oh, that doesn't look really healthy to do. Approaching the seafront, he tried to spot Darina. It did not take him long to find her. There she was, at the cafe table. Go to her then. She probably had no clue how much he appreciated her starting the conversation. Usually, you are late. Yeah. No words. I am tired. I hope you understand me. I hope you. I hope too. But he did no, not. He did not. Having overcome his anxiety, he squeezed out a handful of words. Edgar, to stay, agree with party. to accept that she's leaving and he needs to agree with her parting but that would be me talking and I don't know how he would feel about it if if he would want her to stay make him feel better but then he'll be being selfish by only think of himself and not her I'm going to I'm going to agree with the parting. He seemed to be ready for such an outcome and did not hold a grudge against her. Yeah, it's, it's the right thing to do. In my opinion, nodding goodbye to her, you hurried to work. Okay. He was almost there when he saw his boss enter the office building. He took it as his personal failure, although his watch showed that he still had several minutes. You had barely got into the office when he noticed two male silhouettes behind him. He turned around 
and saw his boss and a man he had never seen before a little further away. Oh, is he gonna get fired and replaced by this man? To avoid unnecessary explanations, you took a badge from his table and pointed to it. Okay. Yes, despite the fact that there was no live communication with clients, the work charter required to wear a name tag, probably to remember your name. Wow, that's a very unusual name. Nice to meet you. Who keeps saying about my name? What is, what is this guy's name? It is the only unusual detail of my life. Wow, that's a little depressing. An awkward pause hung in the air. The boss standing behind Frank frowned and cast a reproachful glance at you. Frank is our security guard starting today. Oh, so he's not getting fired. I thought he was gonna get fired. Who? Oh, we have nothing to. A security guard. Some of my important documents are missing. Oh. There are only two of us. What kind of documents? That I cannot tell you. That's a little strange. You mean you suspect me? Whoa. No, I do not. And there's a car with music. Okay, now it's gone. Eliminating any opportunity to continue the conversation, the boss turned around and went into his office. I'm sorry if you're hearing the song in the background. I'll try to make this. I'll, I'll try to. I'll try to make the volume louder. The room plunged into silence. You got down to some clerical work. Yes. You was sitting at his sturdy desk, imagining again and again how the shelves, stocked with books on jurisprudence, would break loose due to their own weight from friable concrete and break his head. Wow, that's a big word and uh, that's a little depressing thought. Jurisprudence? Jurisprudence. I don't even know what that means. Somebody tell me in the comments. You know, I'm, I'm gonna search myself later. Allowing himself a little break, you took his diary from his table drawer and made a note. Okay. I never took a plate of soup at school lunches, even when I really wanted to. I was afraid to spill it in front of everyone, but I could put it on the table, which seems to be my life's pattern. Feeling some satisfaction from writing that, he resumed work. This guy's too depressing. There was a rustle of the janitor's broom and the trill of birds outside the window. More accurate than the clock, you thought? Hmm. Chapter 2. Now we're going to chapter 2. On the second day of work, every sip of coffee came out of his nose as blood. Ooh. Covering his nose with his hand, you went to the restroom. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wish I could narrate a little faster and keep you from getting bored. But it is difficult in my condition. Oh, okay. Okay. Is, this, is, is the narrator talking to us? But I like the narrator's voice. It's it's really cool. It's really get, getting me in the mood of this game. And I'm really enjoying it so far. Let's continue. Okay. Returning to his workplace, 
you saw Frank sitting at his table and leafing through his personal diary. Such violation of personal boundaries, it seemed, was about to put you out of temper. Try to ask him. Give it to me. Here, take it. I was curious. In a moment, you hid his diary in the drawer of his desk. I am sorry if I offended you. The incident seemed to be over, but Frank's intrusive nature got the better of him. Mm. Can I ask you a question? What question? Why does everyone in your notes die? Ooh. That's a strong question. I, I'm gonna keep in silence because... I don't know how to explain this, but like the guy should go for help if he's suffering from like some type of depression. But I feel like this Frank guy is really intrusive. It's he's really up in this guy's personal space. So I'm gonna keep keep silence. Frowning, you ignore the question of the self-styled guard. Okay. The office phone rang. Who is it? I'm not answering the call. Does I work here? As soon as you came up to the phone, the ringing stopped. What? Uh, really? I. Uh, that's annoying. He barely returned to his desk when the phone rang. Ah, oh, come on. Fine, I'll go answer it again. As soon as you came up to the phone, the ringing stopped. What? What the f ah, Come on, really? He barely returned to his desk when the phone rang again. <sighs> the thing he want me to ignore the call. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a third time. Third time's a charm. As soon as you came up to the phone, the ringing stopped. Just dang it. This action make me angry. He barely returned to his desk. Oh, well, I'm, I'm gonna ignore the call. The ringing bored into his skull. You was buzzing together with the receiver. You involuntarily took off, but his head started spinning. And he was seeing dark spots. Mm. Holding onto the railing, you slid down the stairs and jumped out onto the street. Okay, try to get fresh, a fresh air, right? He ran into his boss at the door, who stood there smoking. Go to bed now. You can give me the rest of the papers tomorrow. I think the boss knows about the the guy's problem, so. Mad, mad respect. He did not have any strength left to work anyway. Although he left some things in the office, he was not in a hurry to go back. He sat down on the doorstep to rest. His vision was not particularly keen on the second day, so it took him a while to recognize a familiar face. Wow. You livened a little. A welcoming grin appeared on his face. So, did he see someone? Hi, Max. Why are you not at work? Is Max his friend? I dismissed my students a little early. How are you feeling? As usual, another night shift. If I was your father, I would have fired you long ago. Wait, is the boss his father? What will be left for...
for me then? Max answered with a question. Okay. Do you want me to take your shift? Oh. Hmm. The boss is... Who I think is the guy's father? Had some documents stolen, and this Max guy just gave me this question. I I don't know if I should trust him. Uh, my eyes are, my eyes are itching. I don't know if I should trust him. I'm gonna say no, thank you, because no, well, Frank is there, but also Frank is a little intrusive, and. A, I, oh, sorry. He is a little. Uh, he's not really the guard. I think Max can be, or someone who uh, who is stealing the documents, could easily persuade Frank the guard. So, well, this is a little hard for me to say, but because if I stay, then the guys then I don't feel sick for. We're staying there working. Wow, it's this game is full of hard questions. And something easy like no or yes is there's so many things that could happen. And I don't know. I'm gonna go with no thank you. quickly said goodbye and left. He heard some painful coughing behind his back, and his lips let out a grin of satisfaction. What? Coming home, you could barely yeah, stand see, on his feet. Me. Notwithstanding his lack of sleep and fatigue, he could Whoa. not fall asleep. The day flashed in his head on repeat. As for the breakup, he did not see himself as the victim. Really? On the contrary, the entire time during his relationship with Darina, what? you wondered... Why did she love him? Drained of all strength and weak in spirit from birth. He did not anymore. It probably his conscience or something. Because he says you, he... Dizziness and pain subsided. At some point, he even thought about calling a doctor, just to make sure that he was still alive. Man, this guy is really depressed. But sleep took its toll. Chapter 3 The alarm went off. You faced a new day with weakness in his legs and a throbbing head. You see, you faced a new day with weakness in his legs. So, in my consciousness, what am I of his? I'm a part of him, but I'm not him. That's what I'm getting. I'm understanding. All night long, he had been haunted by a painfully familiar nightmare. What nightmare? However, when he woke up, all tangible images dissolved, leaving only a nasty precipitate. Okay. His body led him to the kitchen in uh, search of caffeine. Yes, the coffee. Coffee is bad for you, dude. Despite the early hours, Wait, he what? found his boss there. It's his How are you feeling? House? You heard the question, but ignored it because of his sleepy state. How difficult is it to answer? You was pleased to hear the words of concern 
even coming that way. Yeah, I knew Sorry, it. Father. I knew it. His bo the boss was his father. I knew it. A cup in Yu's hand inevitably filled with bloody coffee. Ugh. A little blood? You look like shit. Because I am shit. <laughs> I feel like it. Yeah. I do not want to lose my last son. Even someone Whoa. like you. Down talk here, huh? His father had his old wool suit on and was about to right. leave for work. You do not have to go to the office today. Get some rest. I think I am going to rest. I didn't rest last night, but I had a nice shoot. Okay. I will try. You went to his room and sat down at his desk. He took a pen and then remembered that oh. he left his diary at work. You took some letters out of the drawer, which had not been sent for some reason. I hope Frank is not writing or using my diary or nothing. He took one of the letters and added a few lines to it. Tampering with the letters. Remember when Grandfather made me listen to a rhythmic beat in the air? It is the heartbeat of a gigantic whale who swallowed our universe. And I believed him. What about you? You said it was just train wheels wobbling. So I decided that the whale had died a long time ago. Which was better than it being just a fantasy. Do you understand? Asking you this is easy on paper. Because you will not answer. Is this for me. his father? Adding those lines, he felt he had completed something important and allowed himself to take a nap. Once he dozed off, he heard a knock on the door. Right. Any unexpected knock on the door or telephone call could evoke severe Whoa, paranoia in you. Because the knock on your door is louder and more alarming what than on him any him other door. He's so door. paranoid for, for people knocking on his door. In a moment, there was rustling of envelopes slipping into the mail the mailman of the front door. I'm going to see what letter is there. Once he got up, his sleepiness was gone. Sorting out a stack of utility bills, you found a letter yeah. addressed to him. Okay, let's see who is it from the arena. It was a letter from the sanatorium, where he had oh, undergone treatment that summer. Mr. Yu. Dear Mr. Yu. I am afraid I have to inform you that you were misdiagnosed due to a serious mistake on my part. Your disease has a closed form, and the possibility of airborne or droplet transmission is excluded. To put your heart at ease, you can follow the precautions recommended to you earlier. However, I assure you that your disease is only focused on you. Accept my sincerest apologies. Your attending physician, K. So is, is it possible to? What? I, I don't get it. Supposed? To, is it possible to? To remove this disease that he has, and is his name is? Is his name actually you? Like who? Put, is their son's name is you, because it says dear Mister You. So is his name you? What? what? It was like you, like in. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'm probably wrong here, but I think it's some Korean or Japanese or Chinese or some Asian name. There, people are called you. I don't know. I've heard it. 
So I, I don't I don't know if it's correct or not. It's just a word that uh, a name that I've heard some Asian people use. Not trying to be racist or nothing. Just I'm just saying what I heard. It would mean little to a healthy person. But to you, the news turned everything upside down. The disease got quiet. That time it did not try to get out, having used you as a disposable case. It was snuggles right. losing. You took a shower, washing away the fuss of the last days, and decided to go to work. You did not tell anyone oh, about this, impressive. but he believed that the disease manifested itself most fiercely when he went to bed. Yeah, he believed. So, but I think it's not, I think it's because he, because he had a lot of long, he had a lot of long time in bed. He, he used to think a lot, and that used to worry him and make him feel bad again. So. Uh, it's more psychological. It's more psychological. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it's psychological. Psychological. The P is silent. That was why you did not like sleep. His night fantasies became crazier with time. Every dream seemed to him wow. a step closer to insanity. In order to control himself, he regularly looked at his hands and at the clock hands. He walked out of the door and noticed hmm. a stranger near the opposite house. That stranger was an identical copy of you, as if his long lost Wait, twin. What? You Oops. froze. That's a little strange. Him. The door was half open, and he saw a pretty girl and a little boy, probably the same age as the kid, behind it. The newly appeared copy of you smiled, said goodbye to his family, mm. and disappeared. I'm not going to work, I'm not going to spy on You like to alter his route to work every now and then. He would walk through the park, or that patio, or the arch, by which he used to run so often. All that in order to somehow distinguish between days. Otherwise, everything merged into yeah, I know how you feel. stream. He remembered that it was the last working day before the holiday when he came up to the office door. Entering the office, you noticed that Frank was not there. He yeah, grinned at that voice to you. He found a new batch of documents on his table. Pinning his name tag on his jacket, I think you he is his got name. to work. The work did not take as much time on the last working day. He easily sorted out insurance files and, like a clerical deity, decided the client's fate, deciding who was to receive payments and who had mutilated himself with the purpose of deception. What company does you and his father work at? What is... Having gone through most of the papers, he came across oh, an extremely really? familiar storyline. Insurance form, life insurance, form 42, fractures, serious illness, and death. Insurance does not cover self-inflicted injuries, self-inflicted infection, or wow. suicide. So it's an insurance company? 
Date of insurance, March 29th. Date of death, he died today. April no. 5th. He died today? Yeah, he died today. Not today, today. That's today in the game. Insurance sum, 203,500 coins. Salary, 15,000 coins. The client was an insurance agent who bought a train ticket later to be found under its wheels. Witness testimonies varied. According to some testimonies, he was pushed down onto the track. According to the other, he stumbled. Since the gap between the date of insurance and the date of death was so small, there was a note in the file indicating a suspected suicide. All risks were borne by the office that makes the final decision. This is tough. It's a story. Oh, should I accept the insurance? Well, the guy already was. The guy already was close to dying because he had a. I think it was a disease or an infection or something. And. He. He probably, he probably has a family and he saw that the only way to help his family was to get insurance, but unfortunately he died weeks later before, after he did the, the insurance. Now if it was on purpose or not, nobody knows, but if it was, people suspect that it was suicide. I'm gonna accept. I'm gonna second accept this the insurance you confirm the insurance payout to his metaphysical colleague mm -hmm. what guided know. him when making such a decision? Did it evoke his sense of justice, compassion, selflessness, There's or maybe shame? Definite, definite answer on why somebody would do something like this. There's like, each people who had a motive to to end their life is different. For some, it could be. Debt, debt. It could be not feeling accomplished, not feeling full, like there's a piece missing. There's there's a lot of these these. I don't want to call it a thing, but these people are mentally unstable to, to so much that they bring themselves to thinking that by removing themselves from the living world will bring peace tranquility to, to them and those around them but it's not it's gonna bring more pain for him if so, if you're somebody religious you're gonna think he, that, that person is going to suffer in the afterlife and people who were associated with that person be it a loved one family member or whatever will be bad for losing someone like that So it's, yeah, it's sad. It's really sad. Now, there's, there's nobody to blame for this happening. No, you can't blame society, you can't blame the government, you can't blame the people. Everybody, okay? No, if, if you're gonna blame one person, blame everybody. Or just don't blame nobody at all. I'm 
I'm gonna continue here. I am sorry. No, no. You do not have to answer. You completed his work earlier than planned. Satisfied, he carefully unfastened his name tag and put it in front of himself. A confusing question that went through his head. In everybody's head, right? What's next? It was Yu's first holiday, and it seemed he did not even plan what to do mm -hmm. during the long-awaited vacation. He took his, his time to clean up his desk office. and went to his boss's office. He formally knocked a couple times on the door and appeared before his father. Is there anything else I can do? Can I go? I'm gonna ask you, can, I, can I go? Can I go now? I have processed all the documents. The father glanced first at the calendar, then at the clock. It took him a while to realize why his son was asking him that. It's not really hard to understand yes, why his son you are was dismissed. asking him that. Two family There was members. an awkward pause between the family members. To break the silence, you mumbled, If there is nothing else I can do, you can go. Okay. You picked up his things, unable mm. to shake off the feeling that he was awkwardly saying goodbye to his workplace. Leaving the office, you noticed a suspiciously was familiar piece of person. person? coming out of the opposite building. Again? He was used identical I even got double. I got an again seen. Tween. A, sens a sensation of deja vu continued. A sensation of deja vu continued. It lasted until his double noticed oh him. Wiping a smile off his face. The end. Really? Is it done already? Wait, I didn't understand nothing. It ended it like that. I think there's more endings to this game, but I will have to play it another time. It's free on Steam. If you want to play it, I'm going to leave a link there in the description. It was a nice game. It's, I don't know, it, it made me think of a lot of stuff. Like depression, suicide, anxiety. But it also makes you think of other stuff. Like, why the, the identical twin? I even got an achievement. Like, what is that all about? He wiped a smile off his face. Like, what? Some science fictional story here. But overall, it was an interesting game. And I really recommend you guys playing it. So this has been Cosmo, making answer day a good day. Bye!